right, I'm here with Chris from Game Church. You're the director, right? Yes, sir, yeah. Um, it's like a Christian ministry that basically you try to reach out to just nerd culture in general. Is that kind of the main thing? Yeah, so we kind of exist to bridge this gap that's been formed between the gospel and the gamers. So we go to, our kind of main thing is we go to nerd conventions all over the world, mm -hmm. you know, comic cons, gaming conventions, video games, board games, and we set up a booth like this. We've got Gamer Jesus, yep, yep. whether tabletop or video games, and we tell people that Jesus loves them, and we give them free stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and so conventions are really kind of the, the main... Uh, yeah, that's uh, way of outreach. Yeah, that's the bread and butter. I mean, we've obviously got a lot of online stuff. I mean, we're gamers, so we spend mm -hmm. a lot of time online. Uh, so we have, you know, communities there, Facebook and Discord, and we have a website and all that kind of stuff. Fantastic. Um, and uh, how long has it, has Game Church been around? Uh, we did our first convention in 2011, mm -hmm. um, and in 2010 is when we kind of officially started. And we just went around to some. Uh, we were doing a lot of press. So we go around to different conventions, just kind of scoping it out, and we really wanted to see, like, is anyone else doing anything like this in the space? Um, and there wasn't. So then we did our first convention. Uh, we did CES in Vegas mm -hmm. in 2011. Okay, great. Yeah. And uh, what's what's kind of the convention experience like for you? Like, do you get? Because uh, in my experience, you know, being a Christian, like. In nerd culture, there can be some hostility sure. towards religion. I would imagine demographically, there's yeah. probably a higher percentage of non-religious people uh, among you know, people who yeah, attend yeah. at cons. Do you get uh, do you get a lot of people who are curious about it, who are hostile, or just stopping by? What's yeah, well, that's a great question, um, and it's honestly like a question that most people will ask us if they're thinking about coming on a trip with us. Mm. Um, so, you know, we have missionaries that come on trips and all that, and. Um, it's a common question, and it was my, it was like the thing I was worried most about before I started getting involved and doing my first trip. And surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, we have very few, very little pushback mm -hmm. from non-Christians or atheists. Actually, most times it's the opposite. We'll have people come up to the booth. It'll happen. It's probably already happened today. Um, where somebody will come up and they'll start telling us how atheist they are and they don't believe, you know, this and that and the other. And sometimes they'll even tell us why. And again, we're just sitting here like, we don't say anything. They right, just right, come right. up yeah. and they share this stuff. And then they'll start in the next breath tell us how much they love what we're doing and how much they love this approach and our stuff and our swag, um, which is really encouraging because, mm. like you said, normally there's been a lot of opposition. And I, I understand why, because there's a lot of hurt. Yeah, and that's what we hear from these people when they come up is they'll say, you know, yeah, you know, I was raised in the church and, you know, I was abused or I was shunned because I played D&D or whatever. And we get to sit here and say, hey, actually, contrary to what you've heard and felt, Jesus actually loves you. We love you. We love to play games with you. So it's been really encouraging. That's great. Yeah. Um, do you get in any theological debates with people? No, we have no. a strict policy to not do that. Actually. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, we tell all, because we have missionaries that come with us from all over the place. Mm -hmm. Different denominations, different backgrounds. Um, and even us, you know, people that are kind of running the show, it's the same thing. Like, we're all from different places. We have different thoughts and beliefs about, you know, whatever. And it's really not the point. The point for us here is very simple and clear. Jesus loves you. Okay. And that's something we can all agree on. Right. Hopefully. Um, and, and we keep it simple for a reason because so often it's been complicated and it's been just inundated with way too much. And when you have people that you have to start at the beginning, mm -hmm. and the beginning is that Jesus loves you no matter what. And that's what people need to hear. And that's what we've experienced and why it's worked and why people are so receptive to it is because they're hearing a message that they should have heard a long time ago. Um, so yeah, we have a we have a strict policy against it actually, and we'll tell people because it'll happen on occasion sure, yeah. where somebody will come up and they want to dig into something, or they come you know guns blazing, and we're like, sorry, we're not here for that. We're right. simply here to tell you that Jesus loves you and give you free stuff. Yeah. Uh, if you want to talk later, take me out for a beer and we can talk till the sun comes up. But here in the booth, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So so you see, do you guys see your role as basically just the first step towards? Uh, getting people to think about Christianity, to think totally. about the gospel. We're seed planters. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus, he tells this parable, right, about the farmer scattering seed. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, some of the seed's going to fall in 
you know, on the footpath and the birds are going to take it away and some of it's going to fall in the weeds and get choked out. And some of it's going to fall and get scorched by the sun because the roots aren't deep enough. But some of it will fall and grow deep roots and bear lots of fruit. And that's us, man. We're just out there throwing a mess of seed. Um, and, and also, like, we hope people connect to us online. Right. And then we get to develop those relationships and build those relationships and further that stuff so that we get to share more and more about who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. And what do you do in that capacity? Like, so, like, outside the convention, if someone yeah. got something from you and they're like, I want to look more into this, what do you yeah. have online for them? So we have a, a Game Church City, which is a Facebook group. Mm-hmm. I think we're getting close to like 4,000 people or so now. Um, and that's something that just grew out of the convention thing. You know, I can remember when that group was like 100 people. Mm-hmm. And really it was us saying, all right, we're going all over the country meeting thousands of people at these conventions. How can we still connect to them when we go back home? Mm-hmm. You know, we, we're in California and here we are in Pennsylvania. So like right, yeah. we have this wonderful thing called the internet where I can still play games with these people and hang out. And so that's why we started the city. And so we wanted that to be a safe space for anybody. Mm-hmm. We're actually very strict about it not being a Christian gaming group. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of those out there. And we don't need to be another one of those. We want to be a place for anyone to be where people are going to come in there and they start blasting their Christianese. And my atheist friend Travis has no idea what you're talking about right, and wants yeah. to run the opposite direction. Right. But he's the guy that I actually want to reach mm-hmm. and talk to and be in a relationship with. So we make sure that that space is safe for everybody, that they don't feel alienated, um, and that they can feel welcome there to talk about stuff. And we've also got the website um, where we write articles about the meaningful moments in games. You know, there's any number of sites out there that are going to review games based on graphics and audio and mechanics and yada yada. That's never going to be us. We want to say, hey, we're going to spend a lot of time playing games because we love them. So what can that say about our lives, about our faith, about our families, about our parenting, you know, whatever. Um, and those are the things we want to highlight and talk about. So we've done that mostly with video games. But actually at Gen Con this year, we did a ton of coverage um, and even wrote some things just about board games and what those can do and say about that kind of stuff. Um, we also have our podcast on uh, on our website, the Game Church Podcast, where we invite uh, developers or people that are in the industry, um, whether they're writing or developing games, and we literally just ask them, "What do you believe, and how does it inform what you do in the industry?" Okay, great. There's literally I like that's not a thing that a lot of people are doing. If right, any. right. And it's really interesting. We don't do it in a way to say, like, hey, we want to prove you wrong about what you believe. Right. Um, we just want to have an open conversation and just hear about what that was like growing up, you know, this way, and now you believe this way or, or whatever. So, anyway, yeah, there's lots of things like that going on. Fantastic. Um, I think that's all the questions I had. Anything else you want to talk about with regards to the ministry? No, I mean, you can find us at GameChurch.com. Uh, find us on Facebook, Game Church, Twitter, Game Church, Instagram, Game Church. Uh, <laughs> you can email me, Chris, at GameChurch.com. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to have you on a trip if you want to come join us. Fantastic. Well, I, I, I always enjoy seeing you guys at conventions. Right um, and uh, I think it's awesome what you guys do. Awesome. Just Thanks, Like you said, planting that seed. I think yeah. it's a really it's a, it's a noble purpose. Good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for it. talking with me. Yeah, man.